falling apart. <laughs> Oh no! Pumat's stroll. It was a dark and cold wintry night, and Pumat's soul was walking through the forest, and he was searching for mushrooms. And he went and he found some, and then as he was kept hunting for more mushrooms, he came upon a wolf, and the wolf was like really angry that um, Boomat met him, and then he was like, "I'm just, I'm just a hunter. Um, I don't. You're fine. Just keep going." <laughs> and Boomat Soul was like, "Okay," and um, yeah, and then Boomat Soul left, and he. Uh, Ate the mushrooms, and they had a very lupine flavor. And Pumat Soul became something more. Scanlan's love story. All right. Hi, I'm Scanlan Short Hall, and I'm here to tell you a tale about two gnomes named Pale and Adula. Pale and Adula loved each other so much. Pale was an inventor. Pale created these amazing glasses that were like x-rays, these spectacles that could see through things. And they thought of a really good idea. They went to casinos and they would use these glasses to win all the time. They got so rich and they thought they were so cool. And they loved each other. And while this was going on, at the same time, there was this Goliath in another town named Rodney, who also had feelings for Adula. And he decided to write to Adula. And he wrote Adula and he was like, Adula, why are you with this short guy, Paulie? You should be with me, Rodney. I'm way cooler. And Adula was like, oh my gosh, maybe I, sh maybe I should be with Rodney. <laughs> but before she could go leave with Rodney, Pale stepped up and he sang a song that went, I'm Pale, I'm the best, Pale, Pale, Pale. And... That's where Liam finished it. Uh, so I'm going to say that uh, Dula was moved by this song, as was Rodney. And they both decided to stay. And they had a wonderful threesome. Whittlegast's Web of Words. Let me tell you a spooky tale <laughs> that all the kids in the Empire know. Once upon a time. There were three kids, three kids <laughs> that decided they wanted to visit the vortex. The vortex is a dark, spooky place where a crone lives, an evil hag lives there. And these three kids go to her. And as they approach, she runs forward and she opens up the kids, the first kid's head. And she takes out part of his brain and goes, oh, 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 oh. she eats his brain. And the kid loses all ability to think for himself. And the kids are scared. And then she goes up to the second kid. She she goes hold on and she eats both of his eyeballs and the kid can no longer see he sees darkness for the rest of his life and then she runs up to the third kid 
So try kids. And rips out his beating heart and eats it all. And the kid, worst of all, can no longer feel the love. And the kids go back home without their eyes, without their brain, without their heart. And they realized they are cursed now in the empire. They are cursed. Their children are cursed. Their, their, their children's children are cursed. I feel like there was a pro point to it. I don't remember. That's the end. <laughs> Pike's Purple Jewel Cake. Oh, hi, everyone. It's me. I'm Pike Trickfoot, not Jester. Pike Trickfoot here with the fun buns. Um, and I'm here to tell you a story about... Um, Oh no. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you a story that is known throughout Exandria. And it takes place in the far, far off magical land called Marquette. There's helicopters outside. I hope you can't hear them. Um, okay. Our story starts with a beautiful noble woman uh, whose name was Marquita Picardi, and she was so beautiful, and everybody looked at her and thought how beautiful she was, and she would walk through the streets, and everybody would look at her, and she would go, oh, thank you, thank you for looking at me, I'm so fabulous, and they would be like, you really are, you're amazing. And she lived in a beautiful big house that was bigger than anybody else's houses, and they loved it, and she loved it. And she was home one day at her house, just looking at herself in the mirror. And there came a knock on the door. And when she opened the door, there was this little girl, a little pauper, poor girl standing there. And the little girl said, please, Makita Mar Picardi, I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry and I'm so thirsty and I'm so poor and I was hoping that maybe you would give me a little bit of food or a little bit of and a little bit of water and um Marquita Bacardi was oh and if you do that then I will grant you a wish I will give you a wish and Marquita Bacardi was oof, offended at the sight of this Poor little girl, but she pushed through her her sensibilities and looked at looked and saw that there was oh God <laughs> falling apart, <laughs> and thought about the wish that she was gonna get. So she was like, "Oh, all right, I guess I'll do it." Don't come inside, little girl, please. You'll stink up the whole house. I, I don't. I, I'll go get you some water. And so she got her a glass of water and she comes out and here's your water. And the little girl said, thank you, thank you, thank you. Go, 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 go. And she drank it all up. And then she said, um, well, what do you wish for? And <laughs> Marquita Bacardi said, I wish to be looked upon and doted upon. And I wish that everybody who sees me would think that I was the most wonderful thing they've ever laid eyes upon and I want them all to love me and I want to be great and the little girl was like well since you only <laughs> since you only fulfilled half of my request I'll only fulfill half of your wish and in a poof Marquita Bacardi was turned into a beautiful fabulous gemstone a purple gemstone i'm not sure 
if that was supposed to be at the beginning of the story or if that was supposed to happen now, because then Matt transitioned into saying something about there's a food. It's like a food made out of an apple. Oh, it's an apple-shaped gem, did I say that? And then there's a dish that's like made with apple and everybody, it's a really good meal that you can eat. And everybody in Marquette knows that when you eat this meal, you're partaking in a little bit of the story of Marquita Picardi. <laughs> and it helps us remember, be careful what you wish for. Story of Bows. Hey, it's Beauregard Lionette here. And I'm here to tell you a tale that happened in my hometown of Camorda. Uh, you know, one day I was, you know, going around minding my own business and I see this flyer posted around town. And it's, it's, it's this picture, it's this picture of a lion uh, with a crown and chains. And I know right away that that's supposed to be the lionettes. And I know, oh shit, shit. The flyer said, uh, do you want to drink like an animal? or do you want to drink like a king? So I knew it had to be our wine rivals, the Stossmans. So I came up with a plan and I, I dressed up. Uh, I, I, I decided I was gonna go to that shit. I decided I was gonna go to their wine tasting. So I dressed up as a uh, as somebody else, I, I made my name Fiona Applebottom and I went to the Stossman winery and I showed up and Eleanor Stossman herself opened the door and she didn't even know it was me, that's right. And I went inside, she also didn't know that I had just drink, had a, a drink of thistleberry Thorn Brew, which is a, a mixture that'll make you barf, ha ha. So I went in and she, she gave me the tour herself. She didn't even know. She walked me around the whole winery. She took me to see her giant steel drums where they had the, they were making the Zinfandel. And right when I got to the, the drums, <gasps> I barfed all over, I barfed up my haggis lunch all over all the steel drums. And I was like, hey, fuck you, the lionettes are the best. And then all of the guards, she yelled, guard! And all the guards came running in and I pop, pop. And I gave the first guard a haymaker and then pop, pop. I laid out the second guard and I flipped him all the bird and I ran all the way home. And my dad wasn't too pleased with uh, with me doing that, with contaminating everything. But hey, who's gonna argue with with the results? And we never saw the Stossmans post another flyer. Caduceus's Cautionary Chronicle. Caduceus Clay here to tell you a spooky tale about. Th three of my siblings, Calliope, Colin, and Clarabelle Clay. <laughs> the Clays were carting the corpse of a cleric named Arkart, seeking to place him at rest deep in the heart of the blooming grove. As they wandered through the grove, cleverly cascading through the canopy, uh, they heard a voice in the woods. Clarabelle. The second person is supposed to be good. I'm being really bad. Calliope heard a voice calling. Come and 
she heard she was on edge oh, low power mode oh god she went into the woods and chased it down looking for the source and she was gone for a while and colin then stepped up and he said we're carting this cleric our cart through the woods perhaps it's the cleric's fucking it's the cleric's <laughs> perhaps it's people that knew him and so he went and he was like send me a sign oh followers of our cart and they said come and so he ran into the woods and Clarabelle stayed by the cart for a while and the cleverest of the three, she thought, I will try to figure out something better than what my siblings have done. And she called out to the voice. Are you there voice? And the voice said, yep. And she's like, okay. And she walked towards the edge of the trees and said, am I, are you before me or after? And the voice said, before. So she kept walking forward. And as she got closer, she said, is am I warmer or colder? And the voice said, warmer. And she kept wandering, following this call until she came across the corpse of a kenku. And she called out to her siblings, I have found the source of the voice. And her siblings came and they uh, communed with the corpse and set it free. And her siblings were like, how did you, I was clay, I was Caduceus at one point in the story. Her, si her siblings were like, how did you know what to do? And she was like, Calliope, you only heard danger and Colin, you only heard a sign, but I only heard the voice of someone who was lost. And so they released the spirit of the Kenku who still roams the woods and calls out and plays games with weary travelers who wander into the Savalier woods. Grog's vlog. I'm Grog Strongjaw. No, no, Sam said, I'm Grog Stonejaw. That's my name, Stonejaw. And I'm here to tell you this here, this here is an instructional video and I'm here to tell you how to get pumped up. How to look how muscly and strong as I look. I'm a, I'm a genuine muscled up Sid Vicious according to Matthew Mercer. So, um, I'm here to tell you how to build up your biceps and your triceps and your deltoids and your pectorals and your cowboy noodles. And uh, I'm going to give you all the, oh, oh, hold up, I'm shiny. Hello! I don't remember how Macaroni Samsonite sounded, but he's, that's who I am right now, a Macaroni Samsonite. I have no idea why Sam popped up as me. I don't remember anything that he said. Um, I'm just... I'm Grog Strongjaw, I don't know why I left. Um... Oh my god, I don't remember anything! It's gone! <laughs> oh no! Was that the end? That can't be the end! <laughs> For more content like this, just remember to like, comment, and prescribe.